So hello, um, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for your time uh, out of your busy schedules uh, to join the first session for the C Summit today, a nonprofit initiative um, taken by Indian Entrepreneurs Forum. With this, I would like to welcome you all to this five-day event, um, the first one being with uh, Ms. Claudia Mosca today on content that matters. Uh, but before we delve into the session itself, I would first request our chairman, Mr. Sanjay Tambe, to spend a few words on Indian Entrepreneurship Forum, its objectives, mission, and initiatives. Thank you, Neha. Um, yes, Indian Entrepreneurship Forum uh, is not only for Indians, <laughs> that I must say at the outset. It's a non-for-profit uh, organization uh, installed a few years back uh, and reinitiated last year in November to focus on uh, the entrepreneurial journey of uh, different leaders from the industry as well as bringing in uh, Indo-German entrepreneurs who have been already working in this domain and want to grow in this domain. So we want to bring community uh, communities together who are in the business sector between Indo India and Germany, you can say between India and Europe and uh, to speak about their entrepreneurial journeys as well as having their experience shared with uh, new entrepreneurs or startups who want to venture into this. So our main vision uh, is to establish a network uh, to be able to connect with industry experts and uh, to uh, enable the startups to voice their uh, concerns, to voice their uh, issues, to voice also their questions, queries which they uh, are having during exploring the synergies which they can uh, do with uh, the industry experts and the areas which are here already or established. So matchmaking is the main uh, vision uh, through this platform and also to enable them and help them uh, in making their entrepreneurial journey easy. Um, yes, I can say that please join such an organization if you are interested in uh, to get yourself enabled and understand about the um, entrepreneurship which is offered in Germany and uh, we would uh, be very happy to help you in that ief-germany.com uh, is the website which you can uh, uh, see and uh, join us uh, on LinkedIn also you'll find us under the same name I would also like to welcome Neha who was uh, there before she has taken up this um, I would say a step towards also uh, talking to industry leaders who are women basically and also uh, understand or hear about uh, their journeys and stories uh, in this series. So it's going to be a five day series. Neha herself uh, is a, a global uh, product manager for Infinite Technologies in Munich. And she's also the marketing uh, coordinator for IEF. I thank Neha to initiate this uh, series, uh, specially called SHE uh, as a summit where we can have uh, each day up to uh, Thursday, five days consecutive days, we'll have uh, really uh, high quality experts and speakers uh, from this domain. So we are very, very curious to understand and uh, hear out the stories. Thank you, Neha. Welcome. And uh, yes, welcome, of course, the first speaker, Claudia. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Sanjay, for your kind words. Um, I would like to also give a short uh, introduction about SHE Summit itself. So SHE is uh, acronymized for SHE See Her Empowered. This is an idea of bringing diverse cohort of Indo-German women entrepreneurs and successful leaders to share their journeys, challenges, and core principles around their business functions with well-seasoned professionals across the globe. These women play a multifaceted role of mothers, homemakers, while leading a global position to the best of their capabilities, which is extremely commendable. Women are endowed with natural talent of emotional skills, a key ingredient of a successful leadership. With our little contribution under this nonprofit organization, we are trying to make a difference by giving and being a platform through which voice of these incredible women inspires and reaches many across the globe. Truly, some leaders are born women. I would also like to thank and express my gratitude for our first guest speaker today, Ms. Claudia Mosca, an extremely passionate marketeer, a content strategist, a beautiful storyteller, who has taken a detour after 22 years of working experiences 
and multi-dimensional roles in MNCs to found her own company, Briefyworks. Her company is headquartered in Munich. During the course of the session today, I would appreciate Claudia to enlighten how the three ingredients, marketing, content strategy, and storytelling uh, can help to strengthen business successes. But before we delve into details with Claudia, I would also request her to give brief introduction about herself. There would be uh, a question and answer round for the last 15 minutes for the audience to please pose their questions into the chat box. And towards the end for the last 15 minutes, we would run through your questions and try to get the answer from the speaker themselves. Thank you, off to you, Claudia. Well, first of all, thank you so very much for the introduction. I'm really humbled and flattered, <laughs> overwhelmed, I think will be the right word. Thank you for having me for this event. Um, Pleasure is all ours. <laughs> yeah, so um, when, when Nea approached me with this idea, I, I thought, um, I, I felt a sense of responsibility towards younger entrepreneurs, women, and um, I think in cases like this, you just cannot decline um, the offer of joining such an event. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So a um, few words about myself. Um, I'm Italian, born and raised. Um, I was born in Torino, not far from the border with France. For people who are not so familiar with Italian geography. Um, and I lived most of my life in Italy with the exception of a year and a half that I spent in the US in my early 20s. And then since 2011, I made first Austria my home and then in 2015, Germany. I am a mother of two boys, um, happily married, um, two teenagers. So these are really, really exciting times, <laughs> I must say. Um, and as Nea has anticipated, um, I have worked for more than 20 years in corporate environment. Um, covering different roles. I've studied business and economics, and I was lucky enough to um, find a job, a very uh, interesting job right after my degree. Um, and as uh, fate would have it, I joined the big world of high tech, uh, more precisely the industry uh, of semiconductors, and worked for different corporations all through the course of my life. Um, but in the last five years, I sort of um, listen more and more uh, a, a gradual growing of adding all the competencies to all the competencies that I gathered during the course of my life. I'm a veteran marketeer as Neha anticipated uh, all through the course of my life. I occupy different marketing roles and business management roles, strategic marketing, regional marketing, product marketing. And as I said, in the last five years, I wanted to do something more out of those competencies and know-how, something that would also honor somehow my very creative nature. And I started to fantasize about driving and um, founding my own business, which is Briefyworks. Um, it's a consulting agency. We operate in three main fields, content strategy, storytelling, and marketing. And we sort of blend all these three disciplines that are the result of a very long nurture career in corporate high tech marketing um, added with um, additional competencies and um, education in the area of creative writing and storytelling. And then last but least by adding um, a content strategy um, specialization done with Northwestern um, University. Not many people know, but I did have a pleasure to work directly with Claudia in one of the semiconductor industries. And I still remember the day I had just begun my job. There was a, a conference room packed with product marketing management people and Claudia walked in. And when she just started talking, it was flawless. I mean, everybody was like glued to how she was giving the pitch for her products. And uh, I myself, like I was like, oh, this is the person I want to become in next five years down the lane. And she was so captivated activating in such a sense that um, I, I try to keep at least the best possible contact with her also after um, she, uh, she, she pursued to a different role or a path. But I never got to ask you, and I'll take this platform as an opportunity to also ask you, what was that Eureka moment in your life? And what was that key inspiration that molded your path completely from a corporate world now to start your own company? Um, 
So I think the, the very first thing is um, during the course of my life, as I anticipated before, um, I put aside my creative nature, um, my big creative nature. And of course, I grew um, the logical and rational side. I nurture it. Um, but I neglected my creative nature. As a young child, I studied ballet and I studied music. So these were really big creative outlets for me as a child. And so I came to a point where I wanted to combine those two different areas, these two different sides of the brain, if you will, um, the rational and the logical side and the emotional side and provide something which very often does not exist out there in the market. You either find people that are very prawn and very skilled on the rational and logical side and or on the other side. So I really wanted to do something that would combine both and that would respect my creative nature. And of course, um, as a veteran marketeer, I did my study and tried to find um, the place where I could do that. And um, here is where I landed with um, content strategy. Content strategy is an uprising discipline that sort of connects the dots um, in an unimaginary line, if you will. One side is marketing and the other side is journalism. And that was the right, the perfect spot with these two areas come together and provide value for, in, in terms of content for user and audiences. When we, when we talk about a content strategy, I think um, when you're talking about a product or a company or a brand, um, as of today, you find so much of material, uh, which, you know, as a user um, or an end customer, I am information overloaded. If I'm reading it on website, on social networking um, uh, sites like Linden, or even professional blogs now. So, uh, the first thing that came to my mind when I was reading about this evolving discipline of content strategy is how this is exactly different from brand journalism itself and why this is so important for the companies today. I mean, this concept should be prevalent you know, for ages, but why this is getting important now that even nobody cares so much about content, more, uh, everybody cares about content more than technology itself. It's true, it's a very good question. Um, as you said, we are overwhelmed with all kinds of content. It's, uh, it's podcast, it's visuals, it's text, it's blogs. There's so much out there. The, the difference that content strategy um, makes in this context is to actually craft something, ideates, uh, creates, distribute content in a way that is tailored to a specific audience in a way that it is useful and in a way that it is usable for the user. How is this different to brand journalism? That's a very good question. Uh, content strategy is this discipline that sort of brings together different writing communities whereby brand journalism is one of them, but it also brings together web developers. It brings together IT. So if you will, it's a very central role that requires first certain personal skills in dealing with different people coming from different sides in an organization that includes, for instance, people coming from business, people coming from marketing, convincing stakeholders on the worth of content and how it brings value to their organization. And if it's a profit organization, how that makes that business grow according to business objectives or how it can advance the initiative that is being driven by a nonprofit organization. And because, as you said, content is so much nowadays, as a user, I want to receive and read or listen to content that speaks true to my heart in a way, that tells me something, that brings me value, that has a certain voice and a certain tone. And it's about bringing communities. As you said, people nowadays are overwhelmed and they really look for something different where they can identify it when they find this resonance that hits us and involve us at an emotional level it goes beyond just selling a product 
Thank you for sharing that, Claudia. So let's say when a company approaches you or Briefy Works to do their content strategy, what are the biggest challenges or what are the key questions that you ask yourself around before you even, you know, start brainstorming about how I should create the content strategy for that specific company? What are your thought points on that? So the very first is what are the business objectives or what is the initiative's objectives? If it's a nonprofit and it's an initiative and they want to create awareness, that's the very thing that needs to be done and known. Um, and then from there, you can sort of cascade down all the different elements that do build up a content strategy. That means to identify the audience. It means to, to do some research, to an analyze the personas, um, be very detailed on the kind of audience that you're trying to reach with whatever action or objective you have whether it's growing brand awareness or whether it's inspiring um, your customers to do certain actions and so on. Um, and then what normally is uh, to be done, um, there needs to be a very long conversation done with the rest of the group inside an organization, because many times um, a content process is not even existing. So there is no flow that controls, ideates and check whether the voice and tone that the content strategy, the text, the visual, whatever the communication is, is in line with the business objectives. So this is what I want to say. I want to say that um, it brings together so many um, entities with inside uh, an organization that needs to come to the very same understanding of what the objectives are of the organization and how we can advance them by creating content and distributing it, positioning in the right channels, um, using the right pl platforms and so on. Um, speaking of content strategy, when uh, let's say we have to uh, market a specific product or in business objective in general, is content strategy enough or there is a combination of the three ingredients somehow of storytelling marketing and content strategy that comes along together to pitch a product and make a very good storyline around it yeah so storytelling is one element that is part of content strategy as it is part for uh, marketing and marketing is useful and is needed whenever we're trying to selling a product whenever we're trying to sell a service um, but it can also be used in with different techniques for, for instance, in the nonprofit area. They all connect it to one another. If I want to connect with an audience, I need to make sure that I have a very coherent narrative, first of all, across the different platforms, across the different um, uh, channels that I'm using to distribute content. But I need to do it in a way that I sort of fulfill the um, essential ingredients that storytelling requires. That is authenticity, first of all, and it needs to be emotional and connect with the audience at an emotional level. Um, I, I'd like to, to use an example here because I think everybody is familiar with um, Nike and how they do their commercials and so on. The reason why Nike is so popular and everybody wants to buy Nike products is because whenever they put out there an ad, they bring us to tears. And they can do that because A, they know their audience and they are capable to choose the right words and the right visuals to capture their audience, to inspire their audience. Storytelling is an incredible outset, asset and it should be practiced inside an organization by marketeers. It needs to be an element inside a content strategy. It is an incredible resource for leaders, people who are in leadership roles. Um, without a story and the importance of stories, especially nowadays in the times that we're living in, um, yes, a brand can go up to a certain extent, but it's not gonna go far or it will not stay too long. And I want to add something more to it, because, of course, this is a very this is something very dear to me. Um, storytelling is something that belongs to the very nature of human beings. And um, ever since we have been sitting in caves, we have been telling stories or drawing stories on caves walls. This is how we connect with the others. This is how we empathize with our interact uh, interface. 
And this is what brings us together. They do create a very strong sense of belonging and community. And when you take that and bring it to translate or transport it this to, uh, to a brand, everybody wants to buy, to buy Nike or everybody wants to buy a certain chocolate rather than another. They just don't buy the product. They buy so much more, you see? Yeah. Absolutely. I think you have to relate to the feelings uh, associated with that product. Yeah, Otherwise, absolutely. know how great the product is. I think it's hard to sell um, as an individual or the user of the product itself. So, um, uh, Claudia, you have had immense experience also working in marketing uh, at various MNCs and now um, uh, going more in a direction <laughs> of content strategist. Um, are there any best practice sharing that you would like to share with our audience? If you know, if there is a young bidding content strategist out there, what would be your advice in uh, that when they are starting to draft an impactful content strategy for businesses, and also how potentially they can sell this content to them? Um, so, because as I said, it's an uprising discipline. It's not been um, fully. Um, exported outside of the Anglo countries and um, so the person who is wearing the hat of a content strategy needs to um, own the intrinsic of advocate for the discipline in order to advance it. So my very first piece of advice is wear the hat, wear it bravely <laughs> uh, and be the advocate of such, a, such an incredible discipline. Um, there are many people out there that sort of call themselves content strategists. I see this more in Europe than it is in the US. The discipline itself comes from the US. And I think I can mention this. Um, it's been laid out by a, a consulting agency called Brain Traffic that has um, supported in 2006 the Obama um, campaign, electoral campaign. Mm -hmm. So uh, these people are quite smart cookies, they know what they do, and they're trying to communicate and broaden the message of what content strategists, who they are, what they do, and the value that they bring to organizations. So wear the hat, advocate, be patient. It takes time for stakeholders to understand what you do and how you bring value. And many people in management still don't understand as a whole the value that content brings and how it does affect the return on investment. I think if you can bring that conversation to a return on investment topic, maybe they're, they're more prone to understand it, um, but it really takes a lot of natural intrinsic to wear the hat of a content strategist. I hope I can I answer your question uh, sure. fully. Yeah. Sure. I think uh, it's also a part of an innate talent that you're born with. Um, and, um, but I also get a curious question. Can this be actually taught? Or you have, yeah? I, well, you know, it depends really on how open you are and if you are a content, constant learner. And if you are, I also want to say modest in the sense of how much humility you have with you and listen, be able to listen to others. Yes, I do believe that you can you can um, learn that. Um, meanwhile, there's lots of literature around. Um, there are many classes that take place online. Um, in the, I mean, in the digital world, of course, nowadays, that's probably the only world really that we can we can hang out in. Um, so be curious and try, try to also, you know, um, read beyond the discipline that has been taught. Try to listen to what your these people are saying, what kind of people they are, mm -hmm. what intrinsic they have, how they're open to listen and understand the other point of view. I have issues myself or issues, I would say, I have challenges myself sometimes whenever I have to discuss topics with Alex, who is part of Preview Works. He's um, our full stack web developer and user experience designer, and he's, you know, very, um, hardcore minded on certain things that are web related. So it takes that patient and that you can, I think you can uh, practice it. Yeah. 
Um, that brings me to exactly my next question because um, we touched a lot upon the generic idea of content strategy, but I'd like to go a little bit more specific now of what is Briefy Works all about? Uh, what is the mission and the vision of the company? Who are your key partners? And which specific industry um, uh, do you target within Briefy Works operating yeah. here? So, as I said before, Briefy Works is not a, um, an agency, a marketing and communication agency. We are a consulting agency. We do content strategy, storytelling and marketing. We mostly um, teach, so to speak, organization or help organization to um, help to uh, bring or create their own uh, content strategy by using a narrative line and including marketing if the organization goes for profit or social marketing if the organization goes for nonprofit. Um, so we are the three of us, it's three people, myself as the founder, then there's a marketing and communication specialist who is based in Austria. And then there's Alex, who is, as I said before, our uh, web full stack web developer and user experience designer. I think what uh, Briefy Works is at the very core is a small and passionate group of people who, wants, who want to do good um, for small businesses, startup companies, uh, passionate entrepreneurs, and nonprofit organizations. We also look at common people sometimes, um, if they have something to say, if you know what I mean, if they just cannot find their own voice to say certain things out there and they need a bit of help. Um, and the choice of um, leaving out, so to speak, the corporate world has to do with the values that Briefy Works has. We do foster authenticity, otherwise we won't be telling stories. <laughs> um, integrity, of course, and inclusion. And that goes into inclusion and diversity. Um, we do respect and listen everybody and all customers, not matter where they come, you know, from the walks of life. And it's... Um, it, normally it's, it's easier to find that resonance of values in smaller groups, um, mm -hmm. startup companies or scale up companies or entrepreneurs rather than big corporations. Meanwhile, it's changing, I have to say, um, but I think that's where Briefy Works, um, that's where Briefy Works, what Briefy Works brings and that's the very identity that is behind this small group of people so far. We wanted to make a difference um, in many different ways. Um, supporting a small startup company that has a brilliant idea, but does not have the mean or does not know the processes yet. It's far more um, thrilling and exciting than working with a much bigger corporation where processes are defined and sometimes they might be even a bit difficult to maneuver around. So it just brings a different energy. And I think I'd like maybe to, to conclude or seal on this by saying that we are people moved by purpose um, and it does make a big difference. Um, and that would be also my advice to whenever to young entrepreneurs if you want to found your own company if you have a brilliant idea don't make it a way of making money or don't yes of course we all think about how improved our lives can be i will not lie but um your daily um work makes much more sense if you're driven by purpose um rather than other things that might move you. And um, while in the process of um, founding Briefy Works, um, I think uh, it's pretty evident, Claudia, the direction for the company and the centric idea was pretty clear that it has to do uh, centrically around content and marketing. Uh, but what was the biggest challenge while you were founding a company? Because you told you were from Italy, but um, you founded a company in Germany. And how is the start the startup culture in Munich? And how does this help you to also boost your idea, for example? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so as you said, um, it has been challenging for many different reasons, but I think the most, the, 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 the most difficult one was the fact that I am an Italian and I live in a different culture and there's a, a different um, language. And therefore just to start up the entire process and go with the bureaucracy and interacting with different entities um, has been quite, um, yeah, quite challenging. Um, but as I said, if you have the motivation, if you really believe you have something to say, if you believe you have something to bring to the table, I think this shouldn't scare you. So motivation plays an incredible role together with purpose for anybody who wants to start his own business. I also want to say that this is probably the worst year ever to start your own business <laughs> because we are in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so do not you know, discourage, do not uh, lose your motivation. There are, this is actually an opportunity to maybe even agile change your initial plans. This is the advantage of going with a startup and your own idea without having a huge organization behind you. You can change, you can shift. So we had plans, we had certain plans and we had to change those plans and move things more towards what is digital, what is not in the physical space. So um, I think anyone who is entering into this um, mindset of starting your own company, you have to bring that agility and versatility with you. Otherwise, I, I can anticipate, I will not lie, it will be a bumpy journey and you have to be ready for those bumps. Um, so the startup scene in Munich is growing. I think in Germany, the biggest one uh, is still in Berlin. It's still based in Berlin, but it's definitely growing. And it's growing as a, um, as a function of the fact that we have a big industries here, big corporations, big groups. Um, so I did participate, of course, in the last um, few months to many digital events, some local, some based elsewhere. So I took I participated to two big digital forums um, out of the UK. And what struck me the most is that no matter where your location is, people that who have founded their own business who are driving and thriving in this very difficult climate are, are the ones that um, go with this mood of doing something, leaving something behind them. Um, and that's so, as I said, that's so energetic. It's also a great mirror to speak to other people that have founded their own business because you can share, you know, what are the challenges that you're finding? Um, there are many women who are founding uh, new businesses and concepts last week or was it last week? Last week, I met someone um, digitally, I mean, virtually. Uh, whose idea, business idea was just brilliant. I never thought about that. Um, so it's something that I would say going forward, it needs to be nurtured. Anyone who wants to be a founder, find, found your own business, make sure that A, you relate to others or that you connect with community, similar community than you, and make sure that you expand your network. I mean, network plays a big role, of course, when you're founding your own company. I will not lie, <laughs> of course. I'm extremely curious, uh, Claudia, to ask yeah. you, how did your first customer for Briefy Works actually happen? Through one of these digital events. Yeah. Um, yes, so I will not say names. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a she. Um, she, she's running an event um, company, uh, organizing events. So these are really the people who have been really affected by the pandemic. Imagine you're organizing thousand people event. And, and so she said, you know, I'm going to use my time. I'm going to try to make something out of it. I'm going to, you know, um, uh, improve the window, my window out there, and I'm going to create more content to do so, so that people can be attracted and I can create a digital events, small events. So the very first thing that she, that I was asked to do is to write a script, a storyline. Um, so a narrative that would go and support um, a video that um, she had made or she had someone made. And for me, and it's, again, it's not about what you get in return, but how you grow through that experience, because you can put 
A, your competencies and know-how coming from more than 20 years of marketing be done, supporting someone who has a goal and who, among other things, supports a nonprofit organization and build a story that represents her, represents her in her business in this moment in time that is so unique to humankind. Mm -hmm. I thought that was priceless. Yeah, truly well said. <laughs> Claudia, do you believe, because, you know, there are two mindsets um, um, in the companies, especially looking into the startup. So when, let's say, um, a venture capitalist or investor is looking at the startup, um, is he only looking at the financials or how important is content for him or what's your experience sharing on that? So values and purpose are a big thing. Um, so from a cultural point of view, as I said before, yeah, of course, mission and vision, they all play a role and they set the ground for everything. But the a startup is made out of people and um, the, the purpose of the people and the values that they bring is going to translate into a brand at a certain stage. Um, we give knowledge, know-how, competencies for granted, right? So we, we do give that. So that's what they, what the what investors, what uh, angel investors look into, the capability of the organization, how fast they can move, how reliable they are, but what the intrinsics are and what their values and capabilities are. So I think that's, um, that goes to the people um, and there's, um, I want to say as well, there, there's, there's a change, there, there is a continuous change in how the human capital is being considered in organization more and more. And many of these startups, you know, have founders coming from Generation Y and they tick very differently than people coming from my generation or the one before. So they look into the potential of the idea the potential of that entire human ecosystem and how that ecosystem can realize those brilliant plans that they have. And uh, talking about um, um, all of these stuff, um, it just brings another curious question in my mind. Um, you are a great you are a great storyteller. Have you ever thought of writing your own book about it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, I can't give too many details about this, yeah. of course, um, but I've been working on a novel for a couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and um, in March this year, I actually found an editor, and which was beyond imaginable, because uh, it's so very difficult. And nowadays, everybody goes into self-publishing, and there's plenty of good things and platforms to do so. Um, but of course, the endorsement that comes from someone who is from the industry and reads your work and decides to work with you, so to speak, um, it's, it's, it tastes differently. This is what I want to say. So it's a fiction novel and um, takes place in 2000. And it's about um, a young woman, a millennial, who is uh, half French and half American. She goes through a certain journey of life and we don't say how it ends. Otherwise, it will be a big spoiler alert. We can wait for the next New York yeah. bestseller. Soon. <laughs> yeah, well, but, you know, sometimes it's um, it's the process is as important as the actual work that you deliver, you know. Um, and then again, as I said, um, I, I do believe in the power of stories. I do believe in what they do for people and what they do for organizations out there for business and uh, we should all use a bit more of storytelling that brings us down to earth and to reconnect to one another especially in these very difficult times that we're going through so the answer is yes i'm working on it cool i i honestly i would say i'm a little not surprised <laughs> Um, uh, by the way, Claudia, does Briefy Works plans to run any sort of a workshop or programs for kind of also um, giving insights into um, uh, topics like content strategy, um, a storytelling? It's a very good. Uh, it's a very good question. I wouldn't have brought it up if you didn't ask for it. But um, we have uh, an event planned um, on the fifteenth of December. <clears throat> it's a, an online event, just like this one. It's two hours. 
Um, and it's going to be the very first event out of four based on storytelling. And then we have another series on content strategies for events. So they are all events meant to advocate, as I said, for the use of these tools or these disciplines we want to show and explain how good they can be and what, how they can be used in business, how they can apply, for instance, in the context of leadership, if we talk about storytelling or data, um, telling stories that are backed up with tons of data. Um, and then, as I said, on content strategy to explain out there what, is, what it is, why organizations should embrace it, incorporate it, and have the role of the content strategies as part of um, the key strategic role in, uh, in the organization. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. How, how we can learn more about it? Is it in your website or? Yeah, so you can, uh, you can find it on LinkedIn, on Briefy Works mm -hmm. LinkedIn uh, page. So the first event, as I said, it's planned on the 15th of December. Okay. Uh, from 5 to um, 7 p.m. Uh, meanwhile, more than 200 people have already registered, which is beyond mm -hmm. expectation. And before setting the others, we'd like to have the learning because we are a startup. So we need to learn and take the learnings with us and improve. Um, so we'd like to have an outcome out of that event and then organize it. But if we look at, um, at it from a frequency point of view, there would be um, um, there would be one event per quarter on storytelling, one event per quarter on content strategy. So okay. just check on the page, on the LinkedIn page, on LinkedIn for the time being. We will be integrating this on the website as well. Okay. And then we hope that at one point we will have the chance to do it physically in the same room. <laughs> now with the new COVID vaccine, probably, yes. Um, <laughs> right. Right. Speaking of learning, that brings me to my next question. Where do you envision uh, yourself and taking Briefy Works five years down the lane? Um, <clears throat> so I, um, I've been thinking about this um, for a while. And of course, we just started. But the idea in five years down the road um, would be to have an operations, so to speak, unit, a lab unit, and then the side that just does the consulting part. Um, so each and every one of them would cooperate, or would collaborate and operate under a single hat, of course, but they would have slightly different missions, I think. Um, it can be sort of um, understood indirectly, but lab will be more the innovation side, operation will be creating the content. So um, acting more or closer to what, it, what a marketing and communication agency is. And then the consulting part, which is of course the one that keeps sort of the strategy and discuss with customers, help them grow and, and um, embrace um, content strategy, um, use storytelling and so on. Cool. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Claudia. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, I would also appreciate if, um, as let's say for the part of this uh, dialogue session, you can give uh, some key message to our young and bidding entrepreneurs who might have joined today to listen to you. Um, I think most of the people are here from Germany and India, um, also internationally uh, living in Germany as well. So any experience sharing or last tips you would like to give to our audience? I thought about this and um, there are many actually, but I, I came down to three. Um, three main um, things that I'd like to leave um, the audience with. Um, I anticipated one of these during the discussion that we had so far. Make sure that you're, dry, or you're driven by purpose. Do not let other elements interfere to what is really making your heart beat. Um, try to think about um, running an initiative or found your business having the idea in mind of making impact and leaving something behind and, and give an example to employees if you have employees with you at one point. I mean, in the end, a founder has a leadership role as well. So purpose as opposed to old school, let's make profit, let's make money. <laughs> let's, you know, um, that's, that, that comes from a different place. Uh, it really comes from, from the heart, from your values, for what is important to you. So that's the, the number one. Um, the number two um, 
is the power of intuition. Um, we very often disregard or neglect that voice that goes through the head that tells us things and we sort of shut it out um, because of whatever it is, is a system of values or things that we were taught by our families growing up. Do not shut the door to intuition because um, it, ha it, it is an incredible resource. Um, if you use it um, as an asset, it can really take you places. And I'm not going, I'm not being dreamy about it. Um, there's plenty of literature and studies about this. People in executive roles, yes, they do derive their decisions out of data. And today we live in a very complex world. So taking decisions is tough. But many times that decision is not coming from the analysis and research of data, it's coming out of what is called intuition and what is make, it makes us unique. It's part of the human na nature and we should use it. So um, yeah, the other thing that I wanted to, to say is, um, I'm sure everybody in, in the audience remembers this famous quote from uh, Steve Jobs about be, hung be hungry, be foolish. I'm sure everybody remembers it. Um, I like to add to it, be humble. <laughs> Um, and I'm, I'm saying this because um, there are certain traits across different generations that it seems that certain generations do not regard it as um, a friend or as a check element that sort of tell us where we should listen, at what, at what point we should listen in order to grow further. It just establishes, humility just establishes a, a different peace with ourselves and balance with ourselves. It helps us grow. It helps us to see things with a critical eye more than many other things. So be hungry, you know, stay foolish, but be humble, be humble. Thank you very much, Claudia, for those inspiring words. I think um, indeed, hopefully uh, we all took um, uh, some key learnings um, uh, from Claudia today and from her experience sharing. I would uh, I'd like to take a few minutes now, Claudia, if you may allow sure. me to take some uh, questions. We have really good questions actually um, in the chat box. I'll start from bottom to top because um, during the course of the talk, maybe some of them got potentially already answered. So I'll take the first one. Uh, so um, the first uh, thing is building the right culture in a startup is key focus area. What's the culture you want to create for your company? What's the most uncomfortable zone for you as a women leader? So I, um, I think I mentioned the word authenticity before. Um, I do believe that authenticity plays an incredible role in a leadership function. Um, people would understand, people from your organization, people outside of your organization would understand and detect if you're being untruth or if you're not coming from a place of authenticity. That is the moment where you can have a authentic, or, uh, authentic conversation, speak freely. It's something that welcomes trust, builds trust. And no matter how small your organization is, if trust isn't there and is not part of your everyday work, um, you might um, create um, later on a culture that goes more into toxic, toxic, to toxic environment instead of um, a true relaxed environment where everybody performs is at ease. Um, to, to shine their best wherever they come from. If people start uh, not trusting you, they come from a place of fear, um, that, that becomes very challenging and affects motivation as well in the people. People do not feel the motivation flowing, they start losing energy, they start feeling um, drained. Um, so for me, authenticity plays a huge role part of my DNA as the founder of Briefyworks. And I want to believe that anyone who will work with Briefyworks and will work in Briefyworks will embrace that. Uh, I hope the question was answered. Uh, there is a next one. Um, how did you choose partners for your startup company? Was it important to have like-minded people or, or you were looking for your opposites? 
So um, the people that are part of Briefy Works come from my network, so to speak, and people I've worked with or knew um, for many years in the course of my life. What was important for me is to bring these people in with similar values, not necessarily same competencies, of course, not necessarily same intrinsics, but same values. Um, because if you, if an organization, a small organization, a big organization moves um, with the same values, um, it, it is more efficient, it creates less, less frictions inside and basically follows one single vision, one single agenda. I think it's important to bring in an organization different competencies, of course, if, even different mindsets. But the values, um, this is something deeper. This is something much deeper than um, whether you're, um, you know, um, a go-get-it person or whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. Diversity is 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 very important. In fact, it's one of the the, the values that we have. But the values needs to be the same. I have uh, two questions, which is uh, exactly hinting into one direction, which is the major problem. A lot of uh, international entrepreneurs trying to open up a company on a global ground or on an international ground, uh, which is language. So the question is, does language play a major role in marketing or storytelling? Is it even larger than the message itself? And how critical is it to learn German uh, as an entrepreneur in Germany? Ah, oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> So I, I said before, right, so that the process of going through um, subsidies and funds to open uh, Briefy Works has been uh, quite challenging. So it is challenging. It is fundamental to be able to understand the culture and the language if you are doing storytelling and if there's a narrative line. Um, because if we read a book in the original language, many expressions, many um, nuance of uh, meaning will be different than when they're translated. So in Briefy Works, we use three languages. We use German, we use Italian, and we use English. But to answer that question, yes, it has been challenging. And yes, it is very important when we, when you do, whenever you have a narrative line, um, so, um, and you can, you have a narrative line if you're doing marketing and you have a narrative line if you're doing content strategy. I think it will make difference if you're dealing in a world that is purely scientific or if you're talking about web development and you need to code things, you know, that is a language on its own, if you will. But anything that has a narrative line, that has a storyline, it needs to be transmitted, communicated in the local language to succeed, because there are certain adaptation to the culture as well. Was I clear? Was I clear? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I hope uh, if not, please uh, raise your hand in the Zoom, then uh, maybe we can have a direct discussion on that. Um, there is also one interesting question, which I also had in my mind. Um, uh, please share your experiences and struggle getting an initial investment or if there was an initial investment round for Briefy Works. So um, as, um, as anticipated before, we went through um, the route of um, finding uh, subsidies to find Briefy Works. Of course, I had my, you know, own um, um, stock so to speak i had my own um yeah stock of resources that i that i went to but i had to go through a process for founding briefy works and that went all the way to the ministry of economic and, and economy and development of bavaria so i had to provide um, an idea of the business plan a financial plan um, a marketing plan associated to it and so on. Everything had to be in German. So I did not um, lose faith. I sort of worked in English because it's a fully integrated language anyway for me. And I had it translated by someone who was a native speaker and submitted all my papers and then waited for a final um, 
response, which was eventually positive. But um, unlike other um, maybe um, startups who operate in the area of high tech and who need much more foundings to actually bring their idea to from concept to prototyping, for instance, that's a slightly different route. So I didn't personally have to go through that route, but the one I had to go through was anyway challenging for a foreigner here in Germany. Uh, thank you, Claudia, for that. I think uh, with that, I think we have enough questions as I'm looking also on the time uh, for the session today. I would like to um, uh, thank you and express my gratitude for your um, uh, one hour dedication and also joining hands with us in IEF for um, uh, running as one of the guest speakers today for the uh, She Summit opening. And um, I wish you all the best for your future endeavors and also to the Briefy Works team. Um, please, um, people and participants interested uh, in having a deep dive session on uh, marketing strategy, content strategy, uh, please um, uh, visit Briefy Works um, uh, upcoming event on 15th of December to get more insights um, directly. Um, with that, um, I would like to pass on the stage to our chairman again, Mr. Sanjay Tambe, for the closing note. Many thanks, Neha. Thank you again. Thank you for Thank having you, me. Yeah. Such a pleasure. Thank you. It was pleasure is all ours. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. This has been a pleasure to have you here and um, hear all these expert, um, you know, expert ideas which you already shared with us as an entrepreneur. I was listening to a um, today a, on a radio show where uh, you know there is uh, uh, in in Germany it's mentioned that uh, Migrationshintergrund. So that is a word being used for entrepreneurs like you and me, which are from different country. And uh, diversity is the right uh, term, I think. But uh, here they use the word Migrationshintergrund, which you know some sometimes pushes you into a corner, which is uh, not the comfortable zone. Uh -huh. uh, or as you being an entrepreneur, a sure. lot of challenges which we heard a little bit how uh, you know to navigate uh, through that and also take it forward as a marketing storytelling. Uh, and I know so many different uh, you know different uh, sayings from my mother tongue from India, which I cannot easily translate into German even if I wanted to uh, to use it in my company or to use it in uh, in my daily business. So um, that is one thing which, uh, you know, you are an expert in where you can translate that into the storytelling exactly suitable for the uh, German market or rather uh, as an entrepreneur to, you know, bring that into your product because as a, as a founder or as an entrepreneur, <clears throat> you already are connected to that company uh, in a very uh, strong way and uh, automatically your personal story connects to that product also in some other way yes. so it's nice to hear and we, i would definitely participate in your uh, next sessions okay. and uh, uh, thanks to neha also we have got a, a very interesting setup of uh, people coming up next days every day at four o'clock uh, european time four to five pm so please if you do have time also join in tomorrow and up to thursday here is a picture of uh, the speakers in the next four days uh, Neha has selected a, a very interesting mixture so that we can hear different facets of entrepreneurship and uh, how uh, startups and entrepreneurs can be helped in Germany to first of all grow, first to est establish and also listen to different stories from these women entrepreneurs, how they have been able to become successful in their uh, journey, entrepreneurial journey. As an IEF uh, uh, Indian Entrepreneurship Forum, we want to, of course, support all these new ideas which are coming up here and become an uh, enabler for such people uh, to facilitate their ideas, to grow their ideas and help them from, from our experience point of view, how you can take this uh, journey successfully in Germany. So we see that as our role. Thanks to, of course, our partners who have been uh, uh, also here uh, supporting us and um, it's enabled us and also the team of IEF, uh, which is in the background, technically helping us to, you know, uh, resolve this uh, in a successful way today. So have a nice Sunday. T thanks again very much, all of you participants to take time today. Thank uh, you, Sanjay. Sunday, Thank you. <laughs> it's the first advent. Uh, so my son was already lighting up the candle in the morning and he was waiting for the gift, which was 
waiting in front of the door. And for IEF, this was a gift uh, from you, Claudia, which you gifted us today as on the first advent that, uh, you know, be, the marketing is uh, actually, actually a very, very important part where the story begins. Yes. And uh, it was very nice to have you here. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank you again for having me. Thank you. Bye. Ciao, Claudia. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Neha. Thank you, Sanjay. Bye. Bye-bye.